I think humans have always wanted to know their place in the universe, and this goes back to the, the very first astronomers who were really in religious situations trying to tell their populace why something was happening like a comet. And I think that there's something that really uh, captures everyone's imagination. It really is a, the frontier of our knowledge. I'm uh, a chemist of the stars. The Big Bang starts off with all the atoms in the universe being created. It's almost all hydrogen and helium. But everything around us today is carbon and gold and, and silicon. So how did you get from, from the Big Bang to where we are today? And trying to understand that process is really what I'm interested in. I still feel quite a bit humbled by what I see overhead. We are lucky enough to not live on a planet that's permanently cloudy allowing us to actually see where we come from and to understand it more, because I don't think we would if we couldn't see the night sky. Take a look out there, and do you see something that looks like a, a kind of a hazy patch of light in the middle of the eyepiece there? Yes. That's probably the star cluster in Pegasus, a globular star cluster with 250,000 stars, give wow. or take, about 33,000 light years away. That's amazing. I know. And it means that light's been traveling for all that time. Really? You know what was happening here on Earth 33,000 years ago? What? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, not a geologist. This. <laughs> not this. No. No. But isn't that something? We are located at McDonald Observatory, which is 16 miles from Fort Davis, Texas in uh, what we call far west texas the big bend region of texas something on the order of hundred thousand visitors per year come to mcdonald uh, we are currently standing on mount lock on mount lock we have the 82 inch telescope uh, in this direction uh, which was built in the 1930s and at the time was the second largest telescope in the world uh, in this direction we have the 107 inch harlan j smith telescope which was built in the 1960s and was the third largest telescope in the world when it was uh, completed and dedicated in 1968. Just beyond the 107-inch telescope is Mount Folks. The Hubby Everly Telescope is located on Mount Folks. Uh, the HET, as we call it, was built in the 1990s. Uh, together, these three large telescopes and additional facilities that we have constitute McDonald Observatory. Well, there's a lot to see and a whole lot to experience here at the observatory, both during the daytime and in the evening. People of all ages, every walk of life, can visit and learn about the thrill of scientific research. This evening, we have one of our programs that's most popular, of course, for visitors, and that takes place in the evening, called a star party. And outside, of course, the telescopes are pointed at some of the most distant objects that you can imagine, and some nearby objects, like just simply planets in our own planetary system. It's an excellent uh, educational opportunity for the public to both learn about astronomy, see the night sky here at McDonald, which is uh, you know, one of the darkest in the continental United States, and one of our great assets. Hey, come on up. Okay, what are we looking at here? The star parties are the place where we can connect with more people and share the absolute beauty of a nice clear dark sky from the middle of nowhere and this qualifies as the middle of nowhere what we take most seriously is the process of conveying what is so thrilling about being a part of all of this I work on asteroid research Asteroid comes from the Latin word star-like. If you look in a telescope, it is so small that it looks only like a point of light, so they call them asteroids. These are rocky, fluffy, sandy, or maybe metallic bodies which orbit the sun, just like every other planet. It's not a very popular part of astronomy right now. We got a bit more recognition since people realized that asteroids can actually collide with the Earth. So these things happen. We need to be prepared. I'm especially interested in near-Earth asteroids, and those are the objects which have a chance to come close to Earth. And unless you keep measuring its place precisely, then you cannot predict where it will go. And we know that collisions could happen. We have traces of it on the Earth. Think about something half a kilometer size comes in. 
and it doesn't hit Siberia, but Western Europe or North America. This site was originally developed as an observatory in the 1930s as a result of a bequest from William J. McDonald, uh, who died in 1926. Uh, McDonald was a banker in Paris, Texas, in East Texas, and made quite a bit of money during his lifetime. He was very interested in science and also amateur astronomy. And when he died, to everyone's surprise, left his entire estate of roughly a million dollars to the University of Texas. One of the things we are very strong at here is public outreach, and I believe some of that originates from McDonald's will and his instructions to not only study astronomy, but the promotion of astronomy. Every scientist, every person who's asking fundamental questions about nature collects something, and astronomers collect light. What the McDonald Observatory essentially does is to explore nature and to make discoveries.